something that has intrigued me for years now. We have clusters, you know, Joseph Hill, Milet Creek, all his kids stay in this area, and then after that, of course, they migrated here, here and there. We have clusters of relatives from here in certain places, like Detroit area, a bigger area than just Detroit, and Peru, Indiana, uh, Central Florida, around Tampa, east of, of that area, Ada, Oklahoma, and we have other clusters, and those people went out there, uh, say in the late 1800s, early 1900s, the Detroit people later, um, and they've been there three or four generations now, and I visit them, and they don't even know their connection to Tennessee. I, I try to give them information and try to get them to come to the reunion, but that's their home, and they don't, you know, they're just not interested in coming back and be connected with Tennessee. But I'd like for you to tell me, if you know, why did they go to the Detroit area and Peru, Indiana areas? I think automotive. Automotive industry for jobs? Okay. Why did they go to Central Florida? Tampa area. They didn't build any cars down there. Yeah, they weren't building any cars, so why did they go down there? Did they go towards the Gulf? Did they have anything to do with the... The, um, I was shipping, asking you, shipping, no. Or, is, or is this the shipping industry? No, they went to pick strawberries mostly. Farm and pick strawberries and work in the fruit. truck patches there. Okay. Okay. Ada, Oklahoma. Bunches of people went from here. Not just Roberts's, but, but um, Slaggers, Jared's, Lee's, Bryant's. And they all went, some of them went to Texas first and then turned north and went up to Ada and then they reconnected up there and intermarried with each other. And Ada, Oklahoma, at least half of it must be from Balmy, Robert Switch. Why did they go, why did they go to Ada? To save Blake Shell. What? <laughs> to save Blake Shell. Blake Shell. Chief Land. Chief Land. Land Grants. Land. 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 Now that's what we say. I'm going to be Paul Harvey now and tell you the rest of the story. Which, which, where do I start with first? So, for example, where, did Beth leave? She's in the restroom. Huh? She's in the restroom. Oh, I, okay, I'll save that when Beth gets back because she'll really want to hear this. Uh, so, they went to Central Florida. Yes, when they got down there, they picked strawberries. But the one that went down there, the county sheriff told him if he didn't quit messing with his wife, if he didn't keep his son from messing with his wife, he's going to kill him. So he thought, I've got to get out of here because his son wouldn't behave. So he took the whole family and went down to Platte City. And then they picked strawberries. Now you can say, oh, they went down there to pick strawberries. But it might have been because the sheriff was going to kill him. George Miles Roberts went down there. George Miles Roberts was a brother to Thomas Abraham Martin, the forefather of Olin Martin. They were both Robertses, but when they got old enough to understand how things happened, their mother said, okay, here's your daddy, you can, you can pick your name now. One picked Martin and one picked Roberts. But George Miles, he was an NPE. I'm trying to be polite here. He was an NPE here, and he was treated as an NPE. He wanted to go somewhere where he would not be treated like an MPE, non-parental event. And so he goes to Central Florida. Is Beth back yet? She must be doing number two. Anyway. Uh, Detroit. Well, I'll go ahead without Beth. So, the one guy gets to make it whiskey. His wife says, you can either stop that and we're going to go home want to get him away from all the other whiskey makers around here, or I'm leaving. They went to Ada. He not only quit making whiskey, he started going to church. Next thing you know, he was a lay preacher. Then he was called to be a real preacher. And my daddy says, well, you know, when you're picking cotton in Oklahoma in August, 
The Lord will call you to do a lot of stuff. <laughs> so he became a preacher, and he had five sons, and they all became preachers. Uh, but they didn't go out there for the land. They went out there to, the wife insisted, to keep them from making whiskey back here. Now the Bryants left the area. Any, any Bryant related here? I asked Cat Maxwell, I said, how come the Bryants leave here? He said, oh, they got caught making whiskey on Miley Creek and they gave them a court date to appear and they just all went to Texas. <laughs> oh, wow. So they, they, did, they skipped their court date and went to Texas and then they went up to Oklahoma. And what I'm getting at here is not to try to say, oh, these people, were I don't think they were bad people. I think they were mostly good people. But they were doing things that some of them should not be doing or whatnot. But we want to say, oh, they were, they were wanted land or they wanted to, you know, this, that, that. There were other reasons. And I'm advocating to you, it's just history. It's just it. I don't judge any of them. I mean, look at David in the Bible. He makes me feel so good because when I don't feel good about myself, I said, the Lord was okay with David. Man, I must have a chance here then, right? So, so we're all in that kind of condition. Don't, 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 be, a, don't be afraid of history or, uh, or ashamed of your forefathers. Your forefathers were sinners. I almost guarantee that. I do guarantee that. But, uh, yeah. And uh, we, can, we, can, we can lift up Viola. It's okay. She was, she was a human being. She deserved to be lifted up. And even the cars, for Pete's sake. Glenn, Glenn looks away. So Viola's daughter Mary marries Bird Carr, right? They had about 12 or 13. Mash, there was one of them called Mash and one of them was called Jim. And Mash killed Jim, his brother. That's what happened? I'll, I knew one killed the other one, but I, I never could figure that out. So why did Mash go to Florida then? Was it to pick strawberries? No, he was gonna get retaliated against maybe or he wasn't accepted anymore because he killed his brother. So he goes down there to get a fresh start. Well, I agree that one killed the other one. That was like a big scandal. Well, that, that's reported in the newspapers. We all know what I, well, we know what the newspapers reported, and we know the stories. The granddaughters. The granddaughters of both lines, they hugged, and and it was all, it was all good. They were all okay. Well, I'll add, I'll add a story. I'm going to, I'm going to combine some stories. <laughs> I want to talk about how my grandfather's generation and maybe my great grandfather's generation, uh, the the men often would get in fights. Now they might have fought over women, they might have fought because they had something to drink, but many of them would fight. And I am told of a story that my uh, of Uncle Jim, uh, who lived over there by um, the right off the interstate over there, Uncle Jim Swamp. Uh, it is told that uh, he and his brothers, um, they had a still house that was behind where Paul Heron lived, and there was a spring there, and they would carry their lunch, and, the, and you can imagine this, they're sitting there at the lunch, and every time they didn't know when or who it would be, they would pick one brother that was going to get beat up on, and the other brothers would jump on him and they'd squeeze onion juice in his eyes just for fun, just for fun. And you talk about the Ada, Oklahoma bunch, and my grandfather went out there to Ada, Oklahoma, and he was like the new, good-looking Tennessee man out there in Ada, and the other boys at church didn't like that there was competition, and so they were gonna fight my grandfather. And so they, they got in a big circle, and the preacher held up the lantern to have light so that they could all beat up on each other. And so uh, I share that story because back then they either did it for fun or they did it to for meanness, but they did a lot of fighting. And uh, those are two stories that I remember hearing about when I was little. She's catching on as she'll be able to add details later. But Uncle Tom Jerry. Beth back yet? Uncle Tom Jerry was the preacher at the church. And he held a lantern 
one boy at a time to fight with my dad over who was going to be king of the girls in Ada, Oklahoma, or whatever, you know. So, uh, and now some of the Jarrett, that's why I want to tell them from that. Some of the Jarrett said, oh, Uncle Tom would never do that. He would never, he was a preacher man. He would never hold a lantern from the fight. They were rough back then. They were rough. Going back to Francis Marion and those guys that was deserting all the time in Fifth Tennessee Catholic. If you look at any of the history, that was just a common thing. Fifth Tennessee Cavalry stayed here. They didn't get deployed to Gettysburg or nowhere else. And they I don't think they would have went if they tried to send them. They mostly wanted to protect their families. And when they was at camp, wherever they was, when they decided to go home and check on their families, they went home and checked on their families. When they decided to go back, they'd go back. And whenever they would go back, Army being what it was in those days, they said, oh, you, this, you were captured, you know, come on, you know, released from the enemy or whatever. Uh, and so that's what they did, but, um, uh, but they were survivors. Francis Murray, in one affidavit, the examiner said that he was a clever, he's a clever guy. They had him on the stand trying to get him to admit that he was the father of some of these MPEs, and he said, I'd rather not admit they're mine. And the examiner said, I didn't pursue it any further because, now get this, we know this woman has admitted to having kids by a married man and she's not married. Immoral, no pitching for her. <laughs> Back then, she was an immoral woman having kids out of wedlock. Now, I will say this about my grandpa, and I bought the subject. He took care of all them kids. Unlike today, where they got to take them to court to make them pay their child support. Of course, it probably would not be the worst of it. Don't get me started. Uh, so Francis Marion's war, and then uh, uh, my daddy couldn't read or write, but uh, when Uncle Eugene was going off to war, he was my daddy was working at Oak Ridge, and he had three kids and another one on the way, so he was not vulnerable to the draft. But he decided his conscience was bothering him about his brother going, and of course, you know, World War II was a very loyal, patriotic feeling in the country. So he joined up, and you had to get to, they, they started sending him to school, you had to get to the third grade level of education before they would send you to Germany. Well, I found out later, we think my dad had some sort of form of dyslexia or whatever. Uh, Kenneth Roberts is what telling me this, because Kenneth Roberts could not read or write either, and he was, he was telling, he's younger than my dad, he was later diagnosed with this thing. It was a learning disability, if you will. And we think that's maybe he said. I think that's what Clavis said. You know, he just never could get it at school. Yet he was seemed to be a smart man. <laughs> so anyway, my dad was in there. He couldn't get up to the third grade education. They discharged him in 89 days. 89 days. Phil knows what that means. You got to get that 90 days in to get all those benefits, right? And daddy, daddy, <laughs> daddy would get mad. He, he'd use some bad language. They knew what they was doing. Well, yeah, they knew what they was doing. Let's get rid of you before you cost them more money. Anyway, but he did try to serve. 